<laughs> Hello! Happy Pi Day! I have to admit this is take number two. I kind of messed up the first time. I am going to do a coding challenge where I am going to approximate the value of pi. Now what's running here right now is the actual number pi. I mean, someone should fact check that this is correct. You can go and compare it to piday.org slash million, which I think has the first million digits of pi. But this is a processing sketch using a particular algorithm to calculate all the digits of pi one at a time. It will go on forever. It will get very, very, very slow pretty quickly. Um, I will come back to this in a future video. But what I'm going to do in this video is, find, is look at a way to approximate the value of pi. Now, this came in as a suggestion from uh, originally from A. Krauss 53 on GitHub for how to look at random particles that end up in a circle or outside of a circle. Interesting. It has something to do with the area of the circle. So I'm going to diagram this out. I should also mention thank you to the STEM Coding YouTube channel uh, and a STEM Coding project which has a ton of videos in uh, various topics using programming and coding to teach different types of uh, STEM related topics. It's wonderful. They have a video. Uh, you can find a link to it in this, in this video's description. Basically doing exactly the same thing that I'm about to try to do. Probably better. <laughs> but you know, I'm, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to give it my all. And I'm going to do this in uh, processing, which is a Java-based uh, programming environment. If you're not familiar with it, I'm sure I'll, I'll link to some video where I talk about what processing is. Okay, well, I'm going to let this run, and I'm going to come over here to talk about a method that I'm going to use to approximate the digits of pi. Now, there is something in our world known as a circle. It is a beautiful round shape. It is a shape that I'm not going to be able to draw, but I'm going to attempt to. I'm going to move over here, just give myself more room. Uh, here is a circle. Now, if you were to look up formula for circumference of a circle, uh, or you would find that it's equal to something called 2 pi r. This is the formula for the circumference of a circle. Now, what are these things? Well, 2 is the number 2. R refers to the radius, center to the edge. R, this is the same length anywhere from the center of the circle to any edge point. And pi, well, this is this sort of magic number. 3.141592, uh, that's, that's all I can remember. I might not have even gotten the two and the six right. Good, but we're gonna approximate it. We're gonna see if we can get better than my memory tells me. So, how can I use this fact to calculate the number pi? Well, one thing I could do is I could get a piece of string and I could wrap it around here in my perfect circle. Then I could undo the string, I could get a tape measure, and I could measure it. And then whatever that is, if I knew the value of r, I could solve for the value of pi. That would work. I should mention, by the way, just because I know someone's going to say something in the comments, and it's, it's not tau day. Today is not tau day. I'll come back and do this with tau. But tau is a number, uh, the Greek letter tau, or T-A-U, pi being uh, spelled with uh, English letters or Roman letters, P-I, um, uh, is essentially, well, pi is half tau or tau is two pi. I don't, I don't want to get into which one is which. But this is often uh, used because then we could say the circumference is just tau r. But then, anyway, this opens up a big can of worms that I don't want to go down. So, I'm not going to do the string method. Let's look at another two formulas from uh, geometry. So, so one thing is, what's the formula for the area of this circle? Well, it, has a, it looks quite similar, and there's a special relationship there that's a, a topic for another time, but pi r squared. So pi r squared is the area of this circle. Hmm. Now let's think of something. What if I put a square as a bounding box of that circle, a perfect square. And I can draw that over here with this idea of r being here. So the sides of this square are twice the length of r. The area of a square is the width, or of a rectangle is the width times the height, a square just being the, the side squared. So the area, so this is the area of the circle. The area of the square is <laughs> 4, 4. 2 times 2 is 4 r squared. So look at that. 4r squared, pi r squared. Now imagine something. There's a relationship here, right? There's a relationship between the area of a, of a, let's say the area of the circle to the area of the square. That relationship can be expressed as a ratio. I could say the area of the circle, pi r squared, to the area of the square, 
pi, four r squared. The r's cancel out. The ratio is pi divided by four. Or I could say that pi equals four times that ratio in a way. Uh, but what do I mean by this exactly? What I mean, well, why am I here? Why are we even here? How am I going to use this to approximate? So uh, in, the, in the original GitHub post, it said, well, simulate it with physics. So we could imagine one physics scenario is throwing darts. What if I were to just throw random darts on the wall, at the wall? Well, they would go all over the place. Some darts would land within the square, but not in the circle. And some darts would land within the circle, but not within the square. So in a way, I can kind of imagine the ratio of the area of the circle to the area of the square as the number of darts that land within the circle divided by the number of darts that have landed in the square. Now, three have landed in the circle, and four have landed in the square. So I could say pi, in this case, pi is approximately four times the circle count divided by the square count, which is equal to three divided by four. Four times three divided by four is what? Three. So there is my approximation of pi, 3.0. So that's right. I mean, it's not very good, but I only threw four darts. The more darts that I throw, if I did this infinitely and filled the entire space, I would get closer and closer and closer to a better approximation of the number pi. So this is what I'm going to implement in code. Now, I really, really want to just use for my dart throwing the numbers from this million random digits book. I'm tempted to use the random.org API, which gives, but I think I'll probably just use the processing random function, which is a pseudo random number generator. That's another topic um, but that I will come back to. Okay, so let's go over to the code. Actually, before I go to the code, I wrote this in such a weird way. Um, what I mean is four times the circle count over the square count. This equal sign was sort of a problem there. I'm replacing the circle count with three, the square count with four. So it's four times three over four, and that's how I get three. Apologies for that. All right, so I'm back in the code. Look at this. We're still getting digits of pi here, but slowly over time. Unfortunately, I'm going to stop this program, and I'll be running again later, and I'm going to go to a blank sketch. Whoops. I'm actually just going to close this. Um, and I'm going to go to a blank sketch. Okay, so what are the first things that I need to do? Let's create a window that's 400 by 400. Let's give it a background of zero. Yeah, zero, that's fine. Uh, stroke 255. Then let's call the ellipse function. Uh, at, um, and let's, I think life, our life might be easier if I just do translate to the center to put the um, zero, zero at the center. Yeah, why not? Um, and so the ellipse is going to be at 0, 0 with a radius, a radius of 200. The ellipse function expects a diameter. So the radius is 200, the diameter is uh, 400. And then we're going to do, we're going to say, I'm going to say uh, no fill. And I'm going to say rectangle, uh, also 0, 0, 400, 400. And let's say uh, stroke weight 4. Whoa. Oh, uh, rect mode, and I want to say rect mode center. Okay. And let's make the size actually a little bit bigger so I can sort of see the outline. What I want to do now is I want to start throwing the darts. So I'm going to use the processing's random number function, which is random. And I'm going to say right here, I'm going to do this at the end. Let's do this at the end of draw. Draw is a loop that happens over and over again if you haven't used processing before. And this is the Java programming language with an extra set of functionality for drawing. X equals random. I'm going to say, uh, and let's, let's actually, let's make a variable, a global variable called R, which is equal to 200. So I'm going to say R times 2, R times 2, R times 2, R times 2. I'm going to make a random number between negative r and r, and a y, which is a random number between negative r and r. Then I'm going to draw a point at that xy. 
So let's do our dart throwing. Oh, okay, look at that. So one thing is, I'm getting some like, starry flickery thing. So I really want to just draw this in setup as kind of the initial background. And then I don't want to redraw the background again. But I think I probably will need the translate in both places. There we go. So now you can see I am filling the space with uh, dots. So now what I need to figure out is I need to count the dots that are, well, I know the total dot. And actually, <laughs> all of the dots, I don't have to test if dots are within the square because I've set this up in such a way that it basically can only create dots that are within the square. So what I need to do is determine how many dots are within the circle. So let me do this. I'm going to say if r, if, so first I need to get the, the distance. What is the distance between 0, 0 and x, y? So this is how far from the center is that point. To be honest, I, I weirdly, in all, every case of life, <laughs> I would use the distance function. But for some reason, right now, I feel like it's worth noting that pi is not being used here. Um, that the distance function is actually using the Pythagorean theorem. Because if I know the x offset from the center and the y offset from the center, then this hypotenuse of this right triangle, uh, x squared plus y squared equals h squared, or a, that's the Pythagorean theorem. h is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So I, I kind of want, just for, the, for some weird arbitrary sense of purity, to say square root of x times x plus y times y. And if that distance is less than, less than or equals or just less than, let's say less than, I mean, this is just an approximation. Anyway, less than r, I'm going to say stroke, um, stroke, let's make it a greenish color. Okay, here we go. Otherwise, stroke 255. Here we go. Oops, and I need another curly bracket. Here we go. So we can see now, and let's, um, let's make it a, uh, I don't know. I'm going to pick some arbitrary colors that are going to not look very nice, but I'm going to do my best. And here we go. So we have two different colors. We have this kind of green. Ooh, <laughs> I picked colors that are quite similar. Uh, so, all right, I could, by the way, I could do this without randomness. I could just check all of the pixels, but I like, I like the random method. Um, and let me, um, let me make these colors quite a bit more different. Uh, there we go. So we can see I've got some blue ones. And you can see if they're on the line, you know, depending on where they are, because I have a stroke width of two, they're either blue or green. So that could use some finesse. Um, in the chat, the live chat that's going on, I see someone's asking, what is float? Float is the data type. So unlike in JavaScript, which a lot of my other tutorials in, I would just say let x or var x or const x, depending on how I feel on the beginning of the day. Float is a floating point decimal number. Okay, <clears throat> now, uh, so now we need to do is we need to count. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say int, I'm going to use an integer, uh, total equals zero, and int circle equals zero. So this is going to be, total is going to mean the total number of dots. Circle is going to be the number of dots that are in the circle. And what I'm going to do is I am going to say, now I'm going to look back at my formula, right? Pi equals four times the total number of circle divided by the total number of total. So pi, and I'm going to say p-i-e, just not to be confused with the actual, there is a constant called pi uh, that's available in processing. I guess I could do lowercase pi in processing, but I'll just say pi because pi is delicious. Uh, pi equals, oh, maybe that's really like going to be upset people. Float pi equals 4 times circle divided by uh, total. And let's put those in parentheses just for fun. Now here's the thing. There's a couple problems with this. Number one. Total, I don't want total to be zero. It will never be zero because I'm going to immediately say total plus plus. Like as soon as I pick a point, I'm increasing. So at, at least the first time it runs through this, total will be one. And then of course, if it's within the radius, circle is plus plus. And so let me say print line pi. So let's just look at, let's run this and see what we get. I keep getting zero. 
why do I get zero? I don't get anything. So this has to do with integer arithmetic. So integer math, these are both integers, circle and total. So even if I say 10 divided by 20, that's zero remainder, remainder 10, or 20 divided by, uh, 19 divided by 20 is zero remainder 19. So it's always gonna give me the zero. So I need to explicitly convert one of these to a float. I think I might change this to double to for more precision, but this should now give me you can see here, I am slowly and slowly getting closer and closer, perhaps, to the value of pi. Let's let this run for a little bit. Okay, I'm back. I've let this run for just a couple minutes. You can see that I'm not really, ah, it's, I'm kind of getting something that looks kind of like pi. Uh, I'm a little bit higher than pi, so I have to ask myself the question, what's going wrong here? Well, my, uh, one guess that I have is that I haven't been so exactly thoughtful about my distance check, um, that maybe that, that like sort of border of what's on the line versus not on the line is something that I need to think about more deeply. <laughs> um, the resolution is, is kind of an issue there. Um, but um, the other issue might be just the way that floating point math works in the Java programming language. I might need a different data struct, a different data type that allows me for sort more precision. So hold on, I'll be right back. I'm gonna make some adjustments in the code. Well, one issue is, so look at this nice drawing, first of all. One issue is certainly that I'm spending all this time drawing just to get like one point at a time, 30 frames or 60 frames per second. So one thing I can absolutely do is there's no reason why I couldn't just put a little for loop in here and say, hey, let's do 100 points per frame. And um, what I'm going to do, I don't want, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, Let's make a pi a variable outside of that loop, just so when the loop finishes, I can take a look at what the value of pi is. So now I can do 100 points at a time, and you can see how much faster <laughs> this is sort of filling up the drawing. And we can now go look and see what have I got here. Yeah, so I think, I think we just have a lot of randomness here, and now I'm getting 3.14, it's, you know, we're, we're converging at as best we can. So I think we've done a pretty good job <laughs> at approximating pi. I think that maybe I could actually be done. Um, a couple things that people noted. One is I could actually get rid of the square root from this program and just look at r squared. That could be my comparison. That's going to square root is a very slow, expensive calculation. Um, I could fix some white space here. Um, another thing that I could do is let's just try this with like 10,000 and see what we get. Pretty good, pretty, pretty, pretty pie. All right, thank you everybody. <laughs> this is me, a pro oh, whoa, 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 No, 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 let's, let's go a little step further. Let's use doubles. Let's see if using double actually does anything. So what is a double? So processing natively actually doesn't really support the double data type. Any number that you have in a variable is stored in memory. And so floating point numbers, there's an infinite amount of decimal numbers between any two integers, but we don't have an infinite amount of memory on our computer. So we allocate a certain number of bits. So floating points allocate a certain number of bits, doubles allocate more. So if we really need to do precise mathematics, and then there's other Java classes and implementations for really big numbers. But let's at least change this to double. Let's change this to double. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to use casting because double is not, um, and I'm going to change this, I'm just going to change this to double as well. I'm going to be really, I'm going to overdo it. I don't need to, I think I need to change all of these. But now I should see that this, and by the way, I don't need to calculate it. I don't know why I did that. Um, I can just calculate it once there, and I wrote float, and let's make this double. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. And one thing we can see is already there are more digits appearing in the print line statement. And maybe, maybe, I think there's just so much randomness that's part of this that ultimately, um, uh, ultimately, I'm not so sure that we're going to get much, anything that's really that accurate out of this method. 
But it is nice to see we've consistently got 1.41 now. Which is right! <laughs> if only we could get a 5 here. 1.415. Let's see if we can get a 5 here. Come on, get a 5. Yeah, oh, I saw a 5. 5 consistently. So maybe over time as we do this over and over again. Now one thing might be, maybe we can make, can we make this drawing any prettier? I mean one thing that I might choose to do is uh, make a stroke weight that's actually more like, it's, it's actually at like, that's more like 0.1, so a very light stroke. Uh, maybe you can't see that at all, so it makes a stroke weight of 1, but maybe give some alpha. So uh, some transparency. There we go. This, I don't know, that's kind of interesting. Looks kind of like I'm looking under a microscope. I'm going to let this run for a while, and I'll just be back in a couple minutes to check where it got to. Actually, I'm back because I got a good comment from the chat, which is that I could choose to try to make this test a bit more precise. So I could make this a double. I could cast the X as a double. And again, I'm going to just overdo it and cast everything. Um, so let, uh, let's take a look at this. Let's, let's cast all of those as doubles. And let's run this one more time. We can see it filling up here. And it seems to be running at a perfectly reasonable frame rate. So I'm actually going to try to do this 10,000 times per frame. Well, now it's a little bit slow. So I, I want my animation to be fast. Oh, that was, that was 100,000. Let's just go with 10,000. OK. So let's take a look. OK, I'll be back in a minute. Let's see how many digits we can kind of get and see how close we're doing. Hey, I'm back again. So you can see this kind of algorithm, it's not going to converge very quickly. There's a lot of noise in it from the randomness. But one thing I could do to add to this program is try to keep track of which one is the best. <laughs> so um, there is in Java natively, let's, um, let me take out this print line for a second. And what I'm going to do, so I'm going to say uh, print line. So processing natively has the constant pi. But Java also has the constant pi that is in the math package. So let me look at both of those. And you can see that that one is a double. So this is, the, this is actually what's stored is not that many digits in math.py in Java. So what I'm going to do is I am going to create, uh, I'm going to create a variable called record pi. And I am going to set, um, uh, record pi equal to zero just as its initial value. I don't need to set it down there, so I can just set it up here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at double the difference between math.pi minus record pi, and let's take the absolute value of that. And I also need to um, Oh, can I, I guess I have to do math.absolute because I have doubles. So I'm going to take the difference between math.py and the record pi. Then, so this is actually really the record difference. Then I'm going to look at the difference between the pi I just calculated, my, oh, math.py minus the pi I just calculated. So if if the difference is less than the record difference, if we've gotten one that's closer, then the difference is now, oh, the record difference is now the difference and uh, the record pi, why did I use an underscore? Did I use an underscore? That's sort of unnecessary. Record pi uh, equals zero and then record pi, then record pi is that new pi. And what I could do is whenever I have a new record, I could print out record pi. So let's take a look and see what I get in the console there. And in a way, I kind of want to do that every time because um, I feel like I should give it a chance. This is not a big calculation to do. I might as well do this every single time even though I'm only drawing every so often. So let's put all this inside of this loop and let's run it. And we can see the, this is now currently the record. 
1.415926. Hey, I know, I don't know. Like how many digits have I gotten correct? All right, so let's go look at the actual digits of pi. So I'm gonna go to uh, piday.org slash million. And I don't need that many of them. This is gonna be plenty, just the first line here. Uh, let's open up uh, text edit. Let's put this in here. And uh, let's make this a little bit bigger. Let's go back to the processing sketch. <laughs> Oops, let's bring this down here. How many digits do I have? And let's take a look and compare. So, so far we have gotten one is correct, four is correct, one is correct, five is correct, nine is correct, two is correct, six is correct, five is correct. My font size is not the same. Ah! Have I gotten as close as I can get? No, no, this is wrong. Six is correct, five is correct, three is correct. Ah, okay, so I'm just gonna give myself a couple minutes to take a short break and I'll come back and see if anything got a little closer. All right, thanks for watching this coding challenge. There are so many ways this could be improved. You could sort of plot the difference. You could visualize these numbers and kind of like highlight which digits are correct, which are incorrect. There's so many. You could think about how you're drawing this. You could get your, you could make the random numbers double that you're picking. I don't know if that would really help. You could use my favorite website, random.org, which has an API for random numbers. It's really not gonna make your program run faster. But there is so much that you could try to do. Um, um, so uh, sh if you make something with this uh, coding challenge, please share it with me in the comments below. You can also go to thecodingtrain.com website. There's a place where you can link to your shared version. I will also release a JavaScript version of this that you can run in the browser and maybe actually that might be an easier way to also display the results. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this Pi Day coding challenge.